just finished learning about the value-based prioritization as a Scrum principle. In this section, we're going to learn what time boxing is and why it is so critical to the Scrum methodology. Scrum treats time as one of the most important constraints in managing a project. To address the constraints of time, Scrum uses a concept called time boxing, in which a certain amount of time is allocated for each process and activity in a Scrum project. This ensures that Scrum team members do not self-align too much or too little work for a particular period of time and do not expend their time and energy on work for which they have little clarity. Some of the advantages of time boxing are efficient development process, less overheads, high velocity for teams. Time boxing is utilized in many Scrum processes. For example, in the Conduct Daily Stand-Up process, the duration of the daily stand-up meeting is time boxed to 15 minutes. This gives everyone just enough time to give three pieces of critical information and no more. What have I done since the last meeting? What do I plan to do before the next meeting? And what impediments or obstacles, if any, am I currently facing? If a team knows they should be offering this and only this information, then the meeting is unlikely to run longer due to time-draining digressions. Time boxing is also useful in avoiding excess improvement or gold plating of an item. One note of caution. Arbitrary time boxing can lead to demotivation of the team and may have the consequence of creating an apprehensive environment, so it should be used appropriately. Let's look more specifically at how time boxing is applied in Scrum. First, a sprint is a time box iteration lasting one to four weeks, during which the Scrum Master guides, facilitates, and shields the Scrum team from both internal and external impediments. This aids in avoiding vision creep that could affect the sprint goal. During this time, the team works to convert the requirements in the prioritized product backlog into shippable product functionalities. To get maximum benefits from a Scrum project, it is always recommended to keep the sprint time box to four weeks, unless there are projects with very stable requirements, where sprints can extend up to six weeks. Second, the daily stand-up meeting, which is time box to 15 minutes. The team members gather to report the progress of the project by answering the following three questions. What have I done since the last meeting? What do I plan to do before the next meeting? And what impediments or obstacles, if any, am I currently facing? This meeting is carried out by the team as part of the Conduct Daily Stand-Up process. Next is a Sprint Planning Meeting. This meeting is conducted prior to the sprint as part of the Plan and Estimate phase. It is time boxed to eight hours for a one-month sprint. The sprint planning meeting is divided into two parts. Objective definition. During the first half of the meeting, the product owner explains the highest priority user stories or requirements in the prioritized product backlog to the Scrum team. The Scrum team, in collaboration with the product owner, then defines the sprint goal. Task estimation. During the second half of the meeting, the Scrum team decides how to complete the selected prioritized product backlog items to fulfill the sprint goal. In this context, sprint planning meetings are also conducted during the Identify Task process to identify tasks and during Estimate Task process to estimate identified tasks. The sprint review meeting is conducted at end of the sprint. It is time boxed to four hours for a one-month sprint. During the sprint review meeting that is conducted in the demonstrate and validate sprint process, the Scrum team presents the deliverables of the current sprint to the product owner. The product owner reviews the product or product increment against the agreed-upon acceptance criteria and either accepts or rejects the completed user stories. Retrospect Sprint Meeting The Retrospect Sprint Meeting is time-boxed to four hours for a one-month sprint and is conducted as part of the retrospect sprint process. During this meeting, the Scrum team gets together to review and reflect on the sprint in terms of the processes followed, tools employed, collaboration and communication mechanisms, and other aspects relevant to the project. The team discusses what went well during the sprint, 
and what did not go well, the goal being to learn and make improvements in the sprints that follow. Some improvement opportunities or best practices from this meeting could also be updated as part of the Scrum Guidance Body documents. This brings us to the end of our session on the Scrum Principles of Timeboxing, and thank you for learning with us.